it's a kidnapping caper, it's a ransom, it's a thriller, but it's also a drama. And it has uh, some very interesting characters that uh, really sh shed quite a bit of uh, light on human nature and, and the society we all live in. You got it all figured out, don't you? Hey, last lesson or two, you've done so far. Coming to the picture will be next. So I first got involved with this project uh, when I met Bill Morrissey, the writer on a previous film we'd done together. Billy and I became friends on that project and I asked him what else he had because we wanted to work together again and he gave me the script that he'd written about 10 years ago. So I read it and thought it was great and sort of over the last two years really we've sort of rewritten it, made changes and adjusted it sort of based on the cast and once Aaron got involved, the director. Uh, the project first came to me about a year ago. Um, David Velo and William Morrissey approached me with the script and uh, I read it and immediately thought it was great and I wanted it on board so uh, it was just a, a really, really well written, well thought out thriller. A very um, adult thriller, a very intelligent thriller and uh, it's just something that I immediately got excited about. I gotta do something with my Friday nights, huh? I wanted to just avoid the, the cliches of a regular kidnap film, so which involve um, the police uh, keeping the parents and saying, well, keep him talking, keep him talking. It's really interestingly written, and um, by now we've sort of seen everything, haven't we? And yet this has a kind of new kind of twists to it, and um, I just thought it was uh, it was really well written, and um, and I haven't really t had a part like this on film in a long time, so I was I was totally on board right from the from the first few pages I read. It would be more interesting to have a kidnap film where there's actually amongst the people who are awaiting their uh, children, there's a separate drama going on with them. So it's almost like two films in one, really. And also, I had a thought that the villain, that the audience might want the villain to get away with the crime. I thought that might be quite interesting. So even though he's the baddie, he's sort of the goodie at the same time. So those were two thoughts I had to try and uh, break out of the regular kidnap movie. I'm not going to get this job, am I? Thematically, the film uh, deals a lot with um, this idea of the American dream and that, uh, in a sense, the middle class is sort of is slowly dissolving and, and you've got, in this capitalist system, uh, the, the very rich and the very poor and, and it's the gap between is harder to, to cross, you see, so you've got people finding it harder to get out of one class and into the other, no matter how hard they try, and especially in these economic times. It's not enough anymore the, the, to, to have got all the exams under the sun, to have passed everything. is no longer just a guarantee that, yeah, you're going to succeed. Not anymore. That's changed. I mean, uh, there's a young generation now that that American dream or dream or whatever it was, that if you work hard enough, you can get anything. That's not true anymore. I always think of like movies that I've seen that I really liked and there's like that sort of idea that someone's had enough and they're sort of going to do something about it and they're very steadfast and that is kind of a is kind of a cool thing and I think the average Joe who probably wishes he could do that will love this movie and go like, you know, they enjoy the idea that the the little guy takes down the big guy. Are you sorry? Answer me! wanted to give two separate looks. So for Diamond's story, I'm going to have one sort of color palette, and then for the others, for the father's scenes, a uh, uh, different look entirely, and one, one being very warm and rich and opulent and money, and the other one being a lot more gritty and uh, earth tones and cold. And There's a certain portion of the film Aaron wanted to be quite uh, still, and the other portion was you know, handheld and chaotic, or not chaotic, but just sort of you felt more like you were there, you were with, with, with the performers. I can't believe you didn't tell me the minute I walked through the fucking door. That was my idea. I'm sorry. Always playing an angle, aren't you, Rick? We were very lucky on this film to basically get all of our first choices. Uh, Ray was the first person we thought of for uh, Richard Nader. We were very fortunate that he uh, responded favorably and wanted on board. So Kevin was also our first choice for Dinan. I thought there would be a challenge in creating a, 
a guy who does a lot of bad things, but who the audience would understand and like. And I'd never really done that before. So there was, there was that appeal also, was whether I could sort of pull that off. We were very fortunate to be turned on to all these young kids who were, who were amazing actors, and it just so happens that they're Canadian. We don't live in the real world. <laughs> we don't have to. How did I prepare to be Jeff? Um, well, I just sort of uh, tell people to get me a coffee, you know? I'm entitled to that coffee right there. So over here to John, you know? Uh, actually, no, you, you can't be a, a real asshole on set because they'll just uh, fire you. <laughs> so. There was really no training for running through the woods. I mean, she's supposed to be a bratty know-it-all who has people chauffeuring her around, so she should be out of breath and it should be tough for her and she should complain. I, I didn't really have to prepare much for that because that's who I am. No, I'm kidding. I just spent a lot of money in preparation for this role. That was my biggest, uh, biggest thing. I just went out and acted like a real jerk at all the clubs. I uh, got a lot of drinks thrown in my face, a lot of slaps across the cheek, and uh, yeah, just... I guess I just tried to think rich. Think rich. That was about all you could do. When you say you want to fuck them, but really, you want to be them, really. If I was somebody looking at my character, I would shoot him too. So <laughs> it didn't come as a surprise. What happens in this night has never obviously happened before. So it brings out kind of contentions and, and uh, uh, revelations that things that they've never spoken about that, that come out in this, uh, in this evening. And it's um, really about a friendship that sort of falls apart in, in, uh, you know, in a matter of hours. It's been awesome playing a uh, crazy guy. And it's awesome because I get to, to play around from, from like full on like uh, high level crazy, ready to kill some, some rich kids to uh, just like subtly putting the pieces together. It was really fun because the dynamics, the, 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 what happens, the scenes are pretty different than anything that, that I've done before. So to do it with two other actors who are, you know, approaching it as passionate as you are, it, it's, you know, it's always exhilarating doing that. I was attracted to something I'd never done before, which is kind of a, a snobby female who thinks she has it all and doesn't need to answer to anyone and then trying to find the humanity in her at the end and, and give her some kind of depth uh, as opposed to just being a party girl um, and her having a reason for how she is and how she treats people. I love Jenna because she was so different than characters I've played recently who were um, very uh, innocent and naive and young and, and Jenna's very hardened and bitter and angry and aggressive and so it's nice to kind of be on the other side of things and. I love being in the, in the woods. It's, I'm an outdoorsy kind of guy. And one thing I don't like <laughs> is the, the, uh, the bugs. I got bitten on the forehead just now. And it's actually funny because it was uh, bleeding, almost seemed like perpetually, but uh, we ended up getting it to stop. <laughs> I think it was a deer fly though. Deer flies scare me. Because of what happens, it's, it's a lot of handheld and a lot of, and you know, we're in, we're in basically sort of a one area, the three guys for the whole movie. So that presented a challenge. Yeah, it's been an experience being in a bug suit or whatever the hell it is. Um, but I will never write anything in the forest again. Let's put it that way. A really interesting experience was being blindfolded, tied up, deaf, and having an explosive on my chest because we were doing this scene where I get shot. Not hearing anybody, not seeing anything, being tied up, it was so claustrophobic and you know, the smell of the, the basement and, and the, the, the thing on my chest, like I couldn't move, I think it was gonna explode in my face. I, I didn't, I'd never been squid before either, so I was like, how's it gonna blow up? Am, am I gonna lose skin? Am I gonna, you know, <laughs> is it gonna put my eye out through the blindfold? Um, that was a very scary moment. George, what should I do? Tell me. I don't know. Look like, look like you're directing. But you've been directing, and I'm the one that... Well, what I've enjoyed is um, working with a great team of people who uh, have all done fantastic work. Um, and, and the cast has been a dream um, to work with. They're all so good. It's just very exciting to see them do their thing and to really uh, bring these characters to life and make them so real. 
we're about two and a half weeks behind because of you. And the problem is, we have no money. So you'll never work again. Four weeks behind after two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great. When you when you you work with people who've been around for a while and it's just like the consummate professionals know their lines, they, they know when to take it serious and when to, to have some fun. This guy. This guy. No, this guy. Oh man. Devin. You don't Devin. Even know, man. This guy. This guy's nuts. This guy. I gotta go. Okay. Uh not a fan of him. Not a fan of him. Uh, <laughs> and my hope is the audience will come out thinking, hey, you know, I didn't expect that ending. It was more interesting, it was more thoughtful, maybe, than the standard, you know, shoot em up cops running around routine. So that's my hope, that they, they all feel, yeah, that, that surprised me. I think people are really going to like this. I would go see this movie. I think everybody is really excited about the performances so far and, and the way the movie's been going. So. I know it's working when I'm watching the monitor and I feel like I'm watching a movie and I'm not making one, you know, so.